Hi guys, this is Angela. Welcome back to my channel. I was very busy with my move to Calgary. It was a very tough move, but I finally set up my new workspace slash art studio. So today I'll be drawing some simple trees for the upcoming art kit project. I've never really drawn trees independently by themselves before, so this is also an experiment for me. I realized by using a darker color for the outline of the tree, it helps with creating more volume. So for the inside, I kind of just went with a gradient from one shade of yellow to another shade of yellow. And this actually comes pretty naturally because sometimes the tip of my marker is tainted with another color. So I kind of just use the tainted color at the top and slowly blend it into its original yellow color. You will know what I mean if you have used these acrylic markers before. So for the details, I'm using extra fine tip brown marker with branches instead of just copying a reference or what you see in front of you. I think it's better to go with a more stylized approach when you are doing these acrylic marker drawings because you don't want it to look too busy. So I've just opted with a simple few strokes to depict the branches. Think of rhythm and gesture when you're drawing anything from nature. You want to recreate that movement you see in nature without copying the realistic numbers of branches you see in the reference because that will end up looking too stiff. So for the second tree, I already went ahead with the same technique using a darker marker for the outline of the tree and at the top right corner I used yellow as highlight. On the left side I used pastel green, a cooler shade because in my mind the right side is lit and the left side is cooler morning shadow. So for the bottom or the back side of the tree, I'm using green with a bit of black. For the tree trunk, I'm using brown with black for shadow. When you're limited to only 15 colors, black is very helpful in creating shadow colors. You can blend black into green or brown to create these darker tones without having to buy the specific dark brown or dark green markers. You can tell that each tree has its own hue or its own tone. The first one's yellow, second one's green. So the last one wanted to be a momiji or a koyo fall leaves ranging from red from the top to dark orange at the bottom. I think when you're approaching trees in a more illustrative style, in order to make it look less flat, it's good to create a gradient from top to bottom. This somehow creates the illusion that it's more three-dimensional. So that's the technique that I've discovered today. It also helps to use a darker shade to create some shadow of the leaves on the tree in order to create more volume. So once I'm done with these tree drawings, I'm immediately at my computer editing this video because not only am I working on the art kit, I'm also creating videos at the same time. So at night, I'm doing the line work for these drawings I've been working on. So as I mentioned before, the art kit will include a guidebook with all of my finished drawings and art tutorials and a workbook with all of my line work. You can use the line work to recreate all of my drawings that's included in the guidebook. Aside from these two awesome books, you will also get a calendar which features all of my best postcard drawings that I've done in the past two years, as well as some note cards and two prints. And of course, the art kit will include 15 postcard markers as well as all the art supplies I use when I do these illustrations. I haven't done line work in a while, so you can see me going over the same line like 5-6 times. This also made me realize I should probably draw more. It's so nice to have my own studio and it's extra heartwarming when my cat comes to visit me and just stay with me in my little space. 
this art kit project is actually pretty intense. I've been working pretty exclusively on it for the past month and a half and it's taking up a lot of time. Everything has been turning out pretty well. I like all the illustrations I've created for it so far. The team at Mosery that I'm working with is super helpful and they're going to do a great job designing the guidebook and workbook. So I'm really looking forward to the final result that's coming out in July. So I'll also be doing some color swatches by mixing the 15 postcard markers into as many shades and tonal value as possible. I'm starting with a really light blue, so light blue mixed with white, which is a very pale blue, and then onto light blue, and then onto light blue mixed with sky blue. First, I lay down the initial layer of color, and then while it's wet, I go in with a second color. I'm just giving it a few strokes so the second color's ink are in there. And then I go back to my first marker and blend that out. It's basically like blending watercolor or acrylic or gouache, but you're just using markers and you have to use different brushes. You're not working with just one brush. That's basically the idea. It will be more detailedly explained and labeled in the art kit. So after I created these color swatches on paper, I scanned them in and I formatted them into a cleaner and more systematic chart. And this chart will be labeled and included in the art kit. If you do end up buying the art kit, it will be really fun for you to practice recreating this color chart. In addition to the color chart, I'm also creating a color wheel with the existing 15 markers. This can also be recreated in the workbook. So that's pretty much it for this video. There's so much I want to show you guys and so much I've been working on, but I haven't had time to film all the time. I'm really looking forward to filming a studio tour once I finish decorating this place. If you're interested in the art kit, please sign up using the link in the description box. This way, when the art kit comes out in July, you will get notified right away. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.